If you're watching this video, you are eligible for a free educational account on training.codemer.com after a quick registration process. I'll be using, using the openly available training project. Keep in mind, some features introduced are only available from the long-term supported Carmen release. To get to know some advanced features of views, let's start in the customer requirement specification tracker. I've created a folder called top three that holds the three most important requirements. We can also say it's a parent of the three child requirements. This sort of relationship between items of the same tracker can be used to group requirements of a functional area or test cases of a particular module. Just makes a long list more orderly, easier to navigate, much like the, the file system on your computer. This left part of the screen is called hierarchical tree view because it is ideally suited to display such relationships. The view selector is the eyeball icon in the top right corner. As you hover over it, you can read a description, manage tracker views. In the window that pops up, show ancestor items is already checked and cannot be deselected. This means if I go ahead and add a filter for requirements, starting with the word total and hit go, I'm gonna get the child and the parent. This is hard-coded behavior in the document view. Notice how the eyeball icon has turned into an exclamation mark reminding me of the fact that I have an unsaved view. As I click the save as, I can save it for my personal use or as a public view. Let's experiment with the show descendant items checkbox. As I filter for top three, it will include its children or descendant items. As I remove the show descendant, the same filter displays parent only. Let's take a look at similar options in the table view. The default view in this project is flat out confusing. All seven items underneath top three seem to be included in the folder. This, as we know, is not true. The problem can be solved with any of the three checkboxes, albeit in different ways. Show children and show descendant items are mutually exclusive and pretty similar. Show children will generate an expandable, whereas show descendant will generate an expanded view. In both cases, you get what you filtered for, plus the children as bonus. Show ancestor will display the parent of the selected children. Remember, this is always the case in document view. Let's try them out. First, show children. Let's filter for top three and expand with the triangle. Now I uncheck show children to be able to select show descendant items. Same information without the option to expand. It's logged in the expanded state if you like. Show ancestor can go hand in hand with any of the previously mentioned two. I filter for items starting with the word fully. I get the work item that matches the criterion plus its parent. Once you have developed a stunning view, you can share it with the interested parties, for example, participants of a meeting or training like this one, just by hitting the share button in the top right corner. It allows you to copy the link to clipboard and paste it into any chat, meeting or emailing software. The benefit of such sharing over export is that the role-based access rights will remain in place. In other words, people will only see the work items that they are supposed to, even if you accidentally leave them in the view. This is in sharp contrast with an Excel export, for instance, where you either see the file or you don't. There is a way to make one of the three display options the default for all your table views in preferences. Let me show you how. We go to preferences and select the appropriate checkbox in the reference selector settings. This needs to be done by the individual user. It is not controlled by the system admin. Panel view and detail panel view are new features added to the common release. They both display information on your selected work item within the table view. So you don't have to navigate away into the item detail and therefore making your life easier and your work more efficient. The panel view will display the information and comments, whereas the detailed panel view will give you all the available attributes. That's all about ordinary view options. Now let's turn our heads towards intelligent views. 
Intelligent views allow you to display information from multiple connected trackers. To check out the map of tracker connections, I'm going to navigate to the configuration diagram and then pick custom requirements, system requirements and test cases. The arrow between boxes represents the reference relationship and it always starts from downstream and points upstream. These references can be displayed on the work item level in the traceability browser that has been a core tool in the application since its conception. Let me go to traceability browser and load the preset I've created for the session. In the first column, I get a list of customer requirements. The second column will list the referencing system requirements and the third displays test cases. Intelligent views came much later. Why were they necessary? Well, for auditors and managers, this is sufficient, but engineers want to access the same information in the tracker they are already working in to save them from time consuming navigation back and forth. And that is what intelligent views truly bring to the table. Increased efficiency by placing the information you need at your fingertips in trackers you use day in, day out. Let's create an intelligent custom requirements table view first. I hit the view selector and then head directly to intelligent table view configuration. It's really similar to the configuration of the traceability browser. You need to pick a starting point or initial level, then keep adding levels till you get the desired outcome. On level one, I select the current training project and the system requirement tracker. Let's add a few more columns as well, status, complexity, and business value, and hit go. Use the right arrow on your computer keyboard to get to the system requirement details. This is called the traceability tree view, and it looks pretty much like the traceability browser we saw earlier. The hierarchical table view will pull those details in from their faraway outposts on the right and display them in boxes under their upstream references. Let's talk about limitations of the intelligent table view. Parent-child relationships only show on the top level. To prove the point, I'll head over to system requirements where zero emission is a parent of the charger requirement. In the intelligent view, they display respectively under their upstream references. You cannot resize or reposition columns you cannot add groups or change the sorting. Both of these are grayed out, so it's pretty self-explanatory. And lastly, you can export to Excel, but you cannot do a round trip. As you can see, the option is completely removed from the export menu where it normally is. Let's switch to document view. First thing to notice is that the view will be carried across. This is equally true for simple filters and intelligent views. But how do we know instantly with absolute certainty that we are staring at an intelligent document view and not an ordinary one? Highlight levels in the top left corner. To see the value of highlight levels, let's add another one, the test cases. With the three plus levels, it already makes perfect sense, immensely helping transparency and navigation accuracy. You can use the tree to rewire references. For example, I can simply move the system requirement inductive charging from its current upstream item to the folder Greg copied. For more options, click the info button in the top right corner of the tree view. For example, by holding the control key while you move the system requirement, you add one more upstream reference to the downstream item and consequently it will appear in two places. With the shift and control combination, you can actually move a system requirement into the custom requirement tracker. Sounds like a job promotion. When I do it, a new window pops up where I can confirm the operation. I also get a notification that the custom requirement information from the system requirement will be lost. Okay, I can live with that. And there it is, the prefix CRS signals that it's been translated into a custom requirement as expected. You will find a link to the presentation used in this session in the description of the video. It has helpful links to knowledge base articles and so much more. Be sure to check it out. 
Once I have the view of my dreams, I can go ahead and share it with others. Hit the yellow triangle with exclamation mark and click the Save As link. Give it a descriptive name and make it public so anyone from the project can open it from the same view selector. It's usually the system admins who create public views. Ordinary users seldom do. Thank you for watching this short video on intelligent views. I hope it will make your day-to-day -day life in CodeBeamer at least a bit more productive. If that's so, be sure to join the Intlan Academy Hub on LinkedIn, subscribe to the Intlan YouTube channel, and share your thoughts and experiences via G2 Crowd. Not to mention the like button. Okay, that's it for this Intlan Academy in Focus session. See you next week. Bye.